bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you that it is holy, that you sanctify us with your word and your presence. Be a voice through me, Lord, to speak that you may be praised to bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. True Christians, on this first slide that's going to be projected in just a moment, we find four characteristics of a true Christian. Why do I say a true Christian? Because often it is mixed between truth and error, but the reformers of old had only true Christianity when they protested against the errors of the church at their time. Our focus is on the West African Union and our story is taken in Guinea. Africa is only 2% Adventist. We have a lot of work to do in Africa. And even though Africa is half Christianity with the other half almost Muslim with about 8% animalistic, it is mixed Christianity for the most. Mixed with paganism and Christianity or Muslim with paganism. Paganism still is infiltrating all the religions, Christianity including. So true Christianity, starting with the reformers. They refuse to compromise or deny their faith even before persecution or death. Two, they refuse to accept any other authority but the Bible and the Bible only. Number three, they focus their attention on sharing their faith and winning converts. And lastly, they try to preserve the copies of the original Bible manuscript. And adding to this is Revelation 12, 11. They overcame by three points. And those three points are first, the blood of the lamb. Number two, the word of their testimony. And number three, they did not love their lives to the death. And as I read this story of Maria, which is not a real name in Ghana, in Guinea, understand that God pursues each one of us. Watch how he pursued this one non-Christian mixed with paganism and how he won her heart to the degree that she ended up uh, giving her life almost like four times because she would not let her Jesus go. This represents what we are to be in the end of time. This is what we today are facing. So therefore, I am, I am therefore petitioning you as you listen to this story to believe that you too with the power and strength of God can have Maria's faith. Maria kept dreaming about this Jesus. She didn't believe about this Jesus. She was not in the religion of Christianity. So to stop these dreams that she's been having all week long, she sacrificed a cow. That would do it. And the dreams would end. But still, every night, there was that another dream yet. Oh, she was exasperated and tell different people what can she do, what she can do. And the stranger said, well, just go down the street of your home here, down to the end of it, and to the office of the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church called Jacob Gabali. Okay, well, she's desperate. She's going to try anything. So she went, got an appointment, went to see him, and she started describing her dreams about Jesus to her exasperation to get rid of them. But instead, this pastor Jacob, he smiled and he said, glory to God. Maria was so shocked. 
She couldn't understand why he was so happy when she was trying to get rid of these dreams. This Pastor Jacob said, you don't need to sacrifice cows anymore or any other thing. He said, lifting up his Bible from his desk, he says, God is calling you, Maria. I think your God has made a mistake, Maria said. I have always belonged to my family religion and worship my God. But Je Pastor Jacob held out the Bible. This is your Bible, he said. Well, what would I do with that Bible, Maria said. I don't even know how to read. Well, Pastor Jacob asked whether anybody in her family could read. Well, she conceded, yes, she did have this cousin in her own faith, their own religion, who could read. So, Pastor Jacob wrote Maria's name in the Bible, and she, he said, take your Bible and go. And Maria was so annoyed that she didn't even say goodbye to Pastor Jacob, much let's say thank you for the Bible, which she did not think she should have. And she thought, who are these people? What do they think of as she walked home? They tell me to read the Bible as if I don't know God. Well, there is a God of my religion. At home, Mary placed the Bible in the drawer and closed it. Oh, she wanted to relax. She flipped on the TV programs and one evangelist after another was preaching about Jesus. Oh my goodness, she turned it off. She went to bed only to dream about Jesus <laughs> again. Then she remembered, oh, the Bible. The only way to stop thinking about this Jesus is to just, just read it. So in the morning, she asked her cousin to come over. Oh, you want to read this, he sputtered. No, I know you can't. You're illiterate. So I will read it. He then turned to the Lord's Prayer, even though he was not a Christian. He read the Lord's Prayer. He underlined it. He read it several times until she could memorize it and say it back. After he left, Maria picked up the Bible. And she finally found where he marked the Lord's Prayer. And when she looked at it, she was shocked. She could read it, and she's never read before. Oh, well maybe it's just this one, one scripture that uh, he underlined. So she turned the page, and sure enough, she could read those too. And from that moment on, Maria read the Bible every day. The Holy Spirit was reading victories. She later realized that it was Jesus who had given her the ability to read that Bible. And so she just gave her heart to Jesus. But not everybody was happy about that. Her own mother, who lived not far from her, was furious. Especially when she learned that her cousin Hamadou, that her daughter had come over to read the Bible, was now an ownership of the Bible. So her mother came over to her house demanding where this Bible was. Maria says, well, it's in my bedroom. So the mother stormed in the bedroom. She looked under everything. She moved everything. And she went through every drawer. She went through everything only to announce when she came back, where is that Bible? I don't see it. And then marched out of the house. Maria went to the bedroom perplexed. There was a Bible. It laid right there on her desk. The next Sabbath, Maria went to the Seventh-day Adventist Church for a second visit. And as a result, she skipped work at the big store where she owned it. She was a very wealthy owner. Mother didn't understand why she hadn't come to work. Well, where were you? She asked. I was in church, Maria said. Oh, Mother looked upset. Maria did not know that her family's religion opposed Christianity and it was even taught to be honorable to kill a Christian. 
even if they were a family member. Oh, Mother, I am happy to work during the week, but I just cannot work on Saturdays anymore. I need to be in church. And from that day on, Mother was so furious with her for not going to work in the big store that she started beating her. I would rather see you dead than to see you dishonor us. And the beatings continued, but they did not change Maria's mind. So the next step, Maria found that her money was blocked in her bank account. Mother had stopped. She, mother lied to her and said, well, it's probably your Adventist friends who blocked it. No, it really wasn't. But Maria said, I have learned that when you have problems, you should pray and give them to Jesus. But the beatings continued. When Maria's mother could see that she was not having any success, she finally announced to her daughter, my daughter, I'm going to kill you. I have to. And a few days later, the first of four attempts were tried. The first attempt was a favorite stew of Maria's. Mother brought it over and she put some poison in it. Unknown to Maria, the stew, it, it, the stew did not, was not healthy for her to eat. But she said to her mother, I, I need to take a, a bath to relax before I eat it. So while she was doing that, a cat came along that she didn't own a cat, just somehow found her way in the house, knocked over the stew, so when she came from her bath, she couldn't have the stew. So that's sparing number one of four attempts. The second attempt is that the mother had her cousin Hamadou come over and just pour poison in her water bottle. Maria was thirsty. She drank that water and she had a severe stomach ache. Oh, Hamadou saw her agony. He felt so bad. He thought it was just something that the witch doctor said it would purify her body. Didn't think it would kill her. So immediately after Hamadou left, she called the president of the Adventist mission, Dr. Pastor Jacob. He came to her house and gave her five charcoal pills. And 30 minutes later, she vomited all up and she felt lots better. That witch doctor who gave him a dude that poison for the water bottle called thinking he would not get an answer. But surprise, he did and she was alive. Okay, so number three attempt. The witch doctor was called. He gave the mother a syringe full of poison and another cousin took that syringe, came to Maria's house with two friends, held her down and injected her left arm with it. After they had sent the housemaid on an errand to leave. But fortunately God was watching over the, and he had the housemaid come back because she forgot her cell phone. Then she saw Maria lying down on the floor unconscious and knowing that Maria had Pastor Jacob for a friend called him up. Then the pastor and two church elders came to take Maria to the church headquarters and prayed for her. Then she vomited up and recovered completely. Maria has no doubts that Jesus protects his children. Psalm 6820 is her text. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Oh, exasperated mother took matters in their own hands. Here's the fourth and last attempt. She convinced her daughter Maria to go with her and her younger sister, Hey. Hadja to a local restaurant to have a dinner together. Unknowing to Maria, the mother put a sleeping pill in her water. It taking effect, she slumped unconscious and Hadja helped mother to pick up the daughter and take her to the car. 
plus Maria's five-year-old son, Mark. Mother was a very wealthy business owner in her own right. She had a very luxurious big mansion caged or fenced off, a luxurious guest house and several buildings and a high fence. Maria was locked up high in a bedroom. Mother had a nefarious plan. She had hired a Nigerian witch doctor to change her mind. And Maria said, I will never deny Christ even if you kill me. But the witch doctor said, I can make you give up Jesus. Your mother told me that she has tried, but I will be successful. So first he mixed up a strange powder with water and forced Maria to drink it against her wishes. He rubbed a strange lotion on her body. Her mother helped and they put a strange powder on her face, which created all these sores covering all of her body that started bleeding all over that over the days, weeks, and seven months, she was slowly dying until Hadja, her younger sister who lived there, was very alarmed to call her friends and sent a cell phone picture of how bad she looked. They then wrote back to Hadja and said, if we give you money, would you find a way to help Maria and her son to escape? We will give you money for you to put her in a cab and to have that cab come to our headquarters office here at Conakry. The Adventist friend wept, couldn't believe what she was going through. But one day, Hadja had her opportunity. On that Friday morning, mother had gone on business, the witch doctor had gone on errand, and Hadja had the gateman to go out on the errand, so there was nobody around. She called the cab. She helped into Maria to the gate, to the cab, with her son, and paid the taxi and told him to take them to the headquarters of St. Thanos Church in Conakry to Pastor Jacob Gabali. There she was received, unconscious, taken, carried to a room there to sleep the night away, to be open her eyes for Sabbath and the prayers of all the church there around her. Maria just wept because she was safe in the arms of her dearly beloved church members. Suddenly the cell phone rang again and again. She didn't want to answer but eventually a friend said what well, they're calling that many times you need to answer it. So she did it was Hadja. Hadja says you have time to get well. Do you hear the ambulance and the sirens? Oh is something wrong with mother? Oh no. It's the witch doctor. He fell from the second story, hit his head, crushed it, and died instantly. And so now you have time to get well. And sure enough, over the ensuing days, she did. The spell had been broken. Jesus has been with her all through all four attempts of her life. And she now is free because she will never go back again. And all she can think of was, can I share my faith with others? Who all needs to hear about Jesus? I just want to commit my life to sharing Jesus. And so it is with us. As these days approach at the end, that will be so much our need and our desire is because of what Jesus is doing in and through us in our own experience that like Maria, we just want to and we crave to share him with others. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with each and every listener and giving them an experience of yourself in such a way that they are compelled like Maria to go out and to tell others about you so that you will have many more souls for heaven. 
We praise your name that you have given us this wonderful gift. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.